BCS Women, Apathon, Train the Trainer video 2, I think this is 2, uh, and the aim of this is to get your heads around the idea of different ways that you can share apps and different ways that you can go about running apps. Um, so, when you're coding for Android, actually getting the apps on the phone is one of the key problems that you're going to have to deal with, and if you've got a room full of people, that is actually quite a difficult thing to sort out. So this is why I thought it would be a good place to start. Um, so the easiest way to do this is to get stuff on the Play Store, yeah? Because the Play Store is trusted. Uh, if you've got something on the Play Store, Google have said it's okay, it's not a virus and so on. Yeah? Everything else, everything else you do is considered dangerous by the phone. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to change some settings on the devices that you're dealing with in order to let them use the kinds of things that you're writing. Um, getting stuff into play is probably the app designer's long-term aim, and it might well be the aim for a lot of the people in the room when you're doing this show. So it's worth knowing a little bit about it, and I'm going to talk a bit about it at the end of this video. But my main aim of this is to talk about how you're going to get people using their devices actually as part of the development process rather than as a means of selling a finished product. Um, so if you're doing it as part of the development process, you've got some code, which in this case is created in App Inventor, so it's blocks-based code, but it's code nonetheless, and that then has to be compiled and then transferred onto the phone somehow. So you get your code, you do something to it to turn it into an app. In Android terms, that's an APK file. Um, I'm not quite sure what that stands for, sorry, should have looked that up. Um, but you get your APK file and then you put it on your phone. It's worth remembering that this is dangerous code. Uh, so before we do this, we've got to enable that on the phone. So on the phone you go to settings and somewhere within the settings on the phone there will be allow code from untrusted sources and you have to set that to be true for all of the phones that you're going to be using. There are lots of options for actually getting things on the phone and what I'm going to do in this session is do a really quick overview of the ones that are of interest and brackets use in this particular question. So the first on the list is something called MIT AI2 Companion and what that does is it's a, that's something that is deliberately designed to work with App Inventor and this is used to kind of debug and make sure things are working and test things on the fly. Next option, package for phone barcode. This lets you get your code, turn it into an APK, put it on the phone using wireless internet and barcode. Package for phone, save APK is another way of doing it. Um, then there's things like using a cable, which I'm going to say just don't bother. I've had so many troubles getting it to work with cable. If you can get it working with a cable, that's great. Tell me how you've done it. Um, I think it's much easier to rely on Wi-Fi. And finally, using the emulator, and we're probably not going to look into that too much because we'd like people to actually use devices. Um, partly because the emulator's a bit rubbish, but partly also because it's actually more fun to use a device. So, MIT AI2 Companion. With this, the code is running on the App Inventor site, but it's also running inside the AI2 Companion app on your phone. Um, this means you've got to install AI2 Companion on the device, but that's okay. Um, what AI2 Companion does is it functions a little bit like a virtual cable. So changes you make on the App Inventor site should update automatically on your device. And when you switch off AI2 Companion, the app doesn't end up on your phone. So this is like a temporary connection that is used to help you with development, to help you with debugging. And what I'd like to do now is switch to uh, App Inventor, which I've got on one of these many tabs. Um, hopefully this is all recording fine. And what I've got here is I've got an app that I've created. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect um, to the AI companion. And that gives me a six character code, which is H-G-I-Y-I-G. -I, -I, I could also use the barcode scanner if I wanted, but trust me, I'm just typing that code into my device. Um, and H-G-I-Y-I-G, okay. Connect with code. I pressed OK, and now I'm waiting for it to happen. That button's disappeared, which is a good thing. And now, on my phone, I've got that thing. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to start a different capture system. So um, using this, huh? I'm going to record a video. So this is me recording another video at the same time. Going to my phone now connected to that app that we were recording before. So if we look back um, at the screen, I can uh, go to the designer, uh, do something obvious. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna um, um, screen one. I'm gonna change the background color to magenta. Oh my gosh, I've changed the background color to magenta. If we go back and take a look at what's happened on my phone, the background color's changed. So this is a side effect of the AI2 companion thing. What we're seeing here is changes in the app inventor on screen happen automatically on the device. Um, so uh, I'm just going to quickly change that by. And it enables us to look at development, look at debugging, and see how things are going as we're going along. Um, the next option, package for phone barcode, what that does is it needs a QR code reader, so you need to install a QR code reader on the device that you're using. And then what you do is you follow a single use link to the App Inventor site, and that will download an APK to your device. You install the downloaded APK, and then your device is okay. It's able to um, run the program, and the program exists on your phone, and that's fine. One of the things that happens with the AI2 companion, go back one, is when you switch it off, the app's not on your phone. If you package it for the phone, the app is on the phone. So I can install the app on my phone and that's just going to work, yeah? And it'll work however far I am from the App Inventor site and I could uninstall the AI2 companion and it would still work. The, the app would be on my phone like forever. Um, in my view, if this technique works, it's the easiest way. So let us do a quick demo of this in the same way that we've just quickly demoed the um, nope, wrong, wrong window. Uh, how many windows do I need open? So this is my, uh, it's actually a wobble table app. There will be another video on this shortly. So we've got the blocks, we've got the designer. It's a program that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to build, uh, provide QR code for APK. Yeah, so that's providing a QR code that's going to pop up in the window once it's packaged the entire piece of software into an APK file. And that APK file, I will then use this single use link to download and um, then we'll be able to go from there and we'll be able to install it and that'll be fine. Um, and then once you've done that, you get the application on your phone and it all works, no problem. So that's package for APK. Um, sorry, wrong window again. That's the one I want. So. Uh, da, ba, da. Packaging for phone option. Th this is kind of option three for getting the stuff off the computer and in off the computer and onto the device. Um, is to save the file to the computer, which is one of the options in App App Inventor. Then email the APK file to yourself, uh, and then download the APK to your phone from your email because obviously you've got your email on your phone. Uh, when I say email the APK file to yourself, I mean email the APK file to your Gmail account. Once you've got the APK on the phone, you can install it much as you would um, the other technique that we talked about. So uh, let us have another go at this. Um, we'll go to the thing, we'll do connect, uh, sorry, build, save APK to my computer, saving the APK to my computer, Again, it takes a little while. We'll save it locally and then we can build the APK. Blah, 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 blah. Saves it. Where's it going to save it, do you think? It's always excitement, isn't it? There we go. It's giving me a choice. I put it in slash temp. Uh, so I put my APK in slash temp. Then I go to my email. I go to compose. And I go to handy. That's me. Attach file temp. So I want to game send. Quickly move away from my email. Here we go. So 
Now I've emailed it to myself and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to restart my second method of looking at what's going on and this is me waiting for an email to arrive on my phone. Um, that one says it's low priority. So I've got an email. So here I've got an email and on that email hopefully you can just about see it's something called accelerometer game. So if I open that, it says opening, and I get a window, and it says, do you want to install an update to the existing application? I already installed it, but it's okay, I'm going to install it again. And so I'll say, uh, install, and it says installing, and ba -ba -ba, still installing, still installing, still installing. Isn't this good? It's like watching paint dry, watching other people install software. Open. And now I've got my game and it's working on my phone. So, workshop leaders, there are things you're going to need to know. And these things are the stuff that's going to go wrong. Um, firstly, no QR code reader on a user's phone. Secondly, QR code reader doesn't work. These two are easily solvable. In these cases, all you do is you do the email it to yourself thing. It takes slightly longer, but it works and you get the application on the phone. Uh, the third one you're going to get is you might get issues with AI2 Companion. Um, these are quite often to do with login codes and they might be due to other stuff that you're not quite aware of, like uh, using a different Google account on the device and on App Inventor. Um, phone not enabled for unknown sources is a big problem. You need to let people change you'd make people change their phone so that they can install unknown sources people might think this is a security breach and probably it is a security breach but tell them just to change it back when they're finished um, and finally if the package has got the same name as one already installed then again that's a problem so getting stuff on google play is actually quite easy um, and it's probably what some of the people in the room are trying to do anyway uh, in order to do this, you need to do Google Developer Account, which is sometimes called a Google Play account, and you need some money. I think it's $25. Um, I think that's what I paid. Um, once you've got your Google Developer Account, you can upload your APKs and some screenshots of the, sh the apps in action to the Google Play Store. Um, you can target different screenshots to different devices, such as tablets and phones, and this enables people to download your app from the Google Play Store, which is a safe way of getting stuff onto your device so they don't need to do the whole um, unknown sources thing but to be honest for development this is not what you want to be doing it takes a while it takes a while to get approval uh, the google play store is a place for dealing with finished products rather than start work in progress um, i thought i'd say a few words on it at the end just because it's probably what people are interested in doing in the long run um, okay and that's the end of that hopefully that was useful